Come in the class. Everybody's, I love this system. Hey, Megan Gerber, how are you? Good morning. Hi, Megan. Hey, Megan. How are you Good doing? Morning. All right. Now I need to mute everybody. Hey, Mike. Good morning, Jimmy. Hey. All right. Unfortunately, we'll have to mute everybody. We have way too many people to keep online. And um, so uh, uh, here we go with nuts and bolts. We've got nine o'clock. Everybody's still pouring in. Good morning, Mike. Hey, if you guys are not in your pajamas, you just hit that little uh, lower left thing that says video. <laughs> or if, you can, if you're in your pajamas, don't do that. Uh, you... Megan? Um, no, we, we're going to have to, uh, Megan, I'm going to unmute you because you are the, uh, let me see how I can do this. No, it won't let me unmute. Hang on. There, I got it. It was me. It's always right. me. Yeah. And I'm going to stop everybody else's video because, um, we need to have uh, Mike on the screen instead of everybody's videos. So I'm going to ask you to turn your videos off. And uh, morning, Megan. Good morning. Uh, How are Mike, you? this is, is Megan, Megan, Mike Savazio. Megan is our uh, vice president of education this year, and uh, she's going to be in and out Great. this morning. So uh, uh, she asked if. You and I could play a bit. Uh, Megan, you got anything you want to say to the room? We have everybody in and we're ready to rock and roll. Um, we'll really appreciate you, Mike, coming in last minute for us and doing this. So as a board, we appreciate it very much. And um, all the agents um, online right now, we appreciate you taking advantage of the education we're offering and keep doing it. Keep getting educated. And if you have a talent to offer, offer it. So that's it. Uh, like so uh, without uh, further ado we've got about uh, 45 minutes to uh, to uh, share with Mike Salvaggio uh, uh, Megan I'm gonna ease you out of the video and um, let me introduce uh, Mike Salvaggio I've known Mike for years now good friend uh, world traveler fabulous fisherman uh, he uh, is one of the world's leading experts <clears throat> on real estate. Mike has been the president of the National CRS uh, organization here in the United States. He has traveled extensively. Have you got all 50 states yet, Mike? Are you? Well, I got 48 of them. 48. What are you missing? Wyoming and Nebraska. But nothing oh. ever happens in Nebraska. That's true. <laughs> That is absolutely true. Not much anyway. Uh, Mike has traveled extensively, has written courses, has taught all over the world. He's a, uh, uh, like I say, a CRS master instructor. He's a ninja master instructor and a good friend. He also has the cutest grandson on the planet. <laughs> and I hope that my granddaughter Ivy and that little boy meet and like each other down the road. I could see a merger of these two worlds. Um, <laughs> and Mike, you're gonna do some stuff for us today in the technology world. I am, I am. Um, so I'm gonna disappear. So, um, okay, but don't leave forever, okay? I won't Still leave forever. Around. And uh, just okay. for those of you watching, when uh, Mike brings uh, his PowerPoint up, you will be able to adjust your screen so that you can see a bigger video and a bigger PowerPoint, sort of share your screen with yourself. Um, remember that you can adjust your screen to whatever viewing you would like. Mike, I'm gonna give it to you, buddy. All set. Thanks, Zan. I appreciate it. Uh, Zan and I go back probably about 20 years now at, uh, on, at CRS and um, you know, I don't think I laugh any harder than when the two of us get together. Uh, it's just magical. And I appreciate him having, having me come here this morning. So we'll try to give you some great stuff. And hopefully you'll take away some things that uh, have some good meaning to you. So let me share my screen with you right now, if I can. There we go. 
and we'll get started. Now, I do want to um, maybe start with one thing here. Have you ever found yourself in a class and someone says something and, you know, the little voice in your head says, oh, I know all that. I used to hear that when someone would start talking about databases. I go, oh, not again. But here's what I learned. If a topic comes up or a subject comes up and you go, I know that, ask yourself this other question. You have to ask yourself, uh, do I know what we're talking about here? Am I doing it? That's the second question. And the third question is, am I doing it well? And I think it'll change your whole perspective when you're in any learning environment, whether it's this one or any other. So maybe kind of carry that along with you today. Uh, we're gonna give you some new things, I think. Uh, they were new to me, and uh, we will remind you of a couple things too. Uh, if it's okay with you, we might just uh, lower your stress level a little bit, how to handle some of the things that um, you run into, especially in these days, and uh, we'll share those things with you too. And we'll have time in the end for some questions. So if you have those, keep them in mind. We'll call for some Q and A's a little bit later, and uh, we'll go from there, okay? So this is really your class, not mine. It's a little hard when you're not doing direct teaching because you don't have the hands going up and all, but you have the ability to do that on your computer. So take advantage of that. And Zan will jump in if there's something really burning that we have to address, or uh, if there's something maybe that I didn't cover as deeply as you want, we'll go back and we'll dig into that a little bit. I love North Carolina. I love coming to your state. There's so many good things there. I mean, I'm a golfer, so that's it. And then you've got fishing. I mean, you've got the best of all worlds. But I told Zan as we travel the country, and Zan's pretty modest. He's taught all over this country, too. Um, as you get away from the coast, something else happens. I don't know what it is. Uh, there's just magic, you know, being able to take, get in your car and drive to that big ocean. We'll get in the middle of the country and they'll say, well, you know, you fish? And I'll say, yeah. He says, we do too. I said, oh. I said, where do you fish? Uh, we got a lake. It's a great big lake. I said, we got a lake too. It's a big lake. The other side's Spain. <laughs> you know, lakes just don't cut it once you've experienced ocean. So if that's your happy place, as the beaches open up and we get to do these things again, spend a little time there. Sometimes in the middle of the winter, I'll, I'll just go down there because I need that fix. I need to, you know, just be on that ocean and look out and be reminded how great this country is and the ability that we have to be here, enjoy that, and the time that we're here to do that. Just take advantage of that. As the season starts, think of that. As we open up, think about that a little bit too. So I just wanted to share that with you. You know, initially under discussion, our development name for this course was 10, 10 or more ideas. But anytime we name a course with a number, we always exceed it. So, you know, the 10 just doesn't really work. We're gonna be doing a whole lot more than that. Now, having said that, here's your challenge. You're gonna invest 45 minutes or so, roughly here. I need you to walk away with two or three, that's all. More is okay, but at least two or three things that you really, really wanna do. Really wanna do and will do. I didn't use the word try, because try denotes the potential for failure. Don't say try anytime you're talking about a goal. Just say this is what I'm going to do. That way you're gonna internalize it and your chances of success will go up. So here's a way to do that. If you're taking notes with uh, pen and pencil or pen or pencil, and you list um, maybe a piece of software or a little utility or a technique and go, ooh, that's, that's something I will do, not try. Uh, at the beginning of that sentence or that descriptor, put an explanation mark, not at the end, but at the beginning. So when you review later on, it's all about the notes. You can go down that list and you go, that was something that I'm going to do and that was something that I'm going to do. Okay, that's what I do. When I leave celebration or some of these national meetings, there's so much stuff, it's information overload. But I'm thinking, what are the few silver bullets? What are the things that are really gonna make a difference to me where somebody else may say, I've been using that for years or doing that or saying that for years, make sure it works for you, okay? All right, so um, why do people do business with us? Obviously they know us and they must like us and they also trust us, but we gotta make sure that nothing changes and they what? Yep, they gotta remember us. So, you know, your cousin certainly knows you 
probably likes you and so, and will trust you, your family after all. But when you find out that Cousin Luce bought a house from another competitor, you're like totally flipped out and say, why did that happen? Why did that, how could she? She knows I'm in the real estate business. Well, she kind of sort of knows, hasn't heard from you since the last family wedding or funeral, probably. If you're like me or most of us, we just don't, we just don't keep that connection rolling. So the blame points right back, right back to us. So it's that, that, that communication. They say, if you don't tell your spouse you love them often enough, someone else will. So you gotta make sure that you've got that going on all the time. But there's a way to do that. It's not intrusive, not annoying, and we're gonna cover a little bit of that in the first part of this. You need a strategy of some kind. Strategies uh, don't have to be complex. Pretty much it's a situational analysis where you are in the world today, a mission statement, what you want to get accomplished. You list uh, some of your objectives. These are the uh, what am I going to do's, the objectives. Then you go into strategies. These are the wins. That's where it breaks down usually, because you might write down one of my objectives is to do this, you know, improve my database or something. Now the next question is when. The answer is not soon or pretty soon or this summer. The answer is a date. And you've got to hold yourself accountable by putting that date down. Whenever there's a mission, think military, if you will, there's a date. It's not, we'll, we'll go over that hill sometime soon. No, you know, 0800, we're there. So you want to make sure that you've got that as part of your strategic plan. You need some tools to do some of that. So we'll talk about a couple of the tools. Your income, by, by the way, is a direct correlation to the number of contacts you have that are experiencing TOMA, TOMA as in top of mind awareness. Someone says real estate, they say Zan Monroe. I mean, there's no hesitation. If it's about real estate, I'm calling Zan. Why? Because he's in my phone and I could hit him with one button. You gotta be that one button person. So how do you do that? How do you stay top of mind? You do that by providing things that are very important. I don't know if you caught George Bush, it doesn't matter whether you're Republican or Democrat, you like him or you don't, but there was a, an address made about, I guess it's been about a week, 10 days ago. I just caught part of it on, on the radio and I went back into YouTube and pulled it up. It's worth listening to, but I took out my ink pen and I always carry a little pad with me and I pulled on the side of the road and wrote this piece because it just, it just hit me so hard as far as what we should be doing today. So empathy is simple and kind. We should be present in the lives of others to ease their anxieties, to share their burdens. And you know what? I think that goes all the time for us and our clients and our customers. What we can do to make their lives easier. What are they anxious about? You know, what keeps them up at night? Whether it's about you know, moving in, moving out, anything to do with real estate. Uh, maybe it's a financial challenge. Just have, but you gotta have that, that, that pathway. You know, worried about that education for that little baby that they have. Things like that all come into play. So if you want to be holistic uh, to them, you have to think empathetic. So you really understand how they feel. You don't have to agree with it, okay? But empathy is understanding how that other person really feels, why they're saying what they're saying. And you ask questions like, I'm just curious, uh, why, why did you say that? What, what are you thinking about when you say that? And you got to drill down really three levels to do that. And we'll talk about some of that. Part of this little session is going to be on uh, psychology. And part of it's going to be on wellness. And part of it's going to be on technology. So um, here's, here's a test question. I want you to take out your pen. You're going to write it down. Uh, I don't need to see it. I want, you, I want to know what your mindset is right now. If you think that it's important to stay in touch with customers and clients, I think we do, how many times a year should you? Any way, shape, or form. How many times a year? I'll just, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to jot that number down. I want you to see it. I want you to visualize it and see what that number is. Just take a second and write it down. We're talking about phone calls or anything at all. Okay. So uh, if this was a class right now, I'd say, okay, everybody raise your hands uh, and we'll go around the room. Now, the, here's the most not common answer ever. <laughs> it's 40. I mean, that kind of ridiculous. You know the most common answer? Four four times a year. But the correct answer is at least 40. I know, and this is where we usually hear the, 
but it's not hard to do. If you have a system, you got to have a system to do this. And there are tons of systems out there. If you think about it, and this is not about CRM, this class, but I just want to do this little intro that we're doing on it because it's so darn important. And now is a great time to call people because you want to see how they're doing, really how they're doing, right? So make that call before they make it. Uh, so there's, you know, maybe four phone calls a year. Uh, once a year, updating their portfolio for real estate. You're going to go out and give them a little update on the market. Tell them that when you close. Just say, I'll be seeing you once a year, you know. Go stop out, give you a little update on your property, and check in on you. Would that be okay? And then do it. Schedule it. Remember the when. You got to have the when in there and make sure that happens. So you got that personal visit. You've got an uh, automated newsletter once a month. There's 12 right there. Pick a few holidays, not Christmas. Everybody's getting stuff in the mail, but you might send a Halloween or Thanksgiving card. You've got birthdays, you've got anniversaries. Um, I think it would be a great idea to personally visit them at least twice a year besides your, your annual visit. Um, here's a great idea. We're in the part of the country where we have hot air heat with you know, air blowing through the vents. Every system has a filter on it. So when you sell the house, take them, show them the filter system. How, how do you take the filter out? which way the arrow goes, give them that little orientation, and just say, if I think about it, I'll drop a filter off to you once in a while. Well, you think about it, and you drop that filter off every three months, and you just leave it if they're not there. Now, think about that for a minute. Oh, Mike was here. Really? Yeah, I dropped off a filter again. Oh, that was great. Um, and they're talking to maybe their sister. and just say, what's going on with well, my realtor stopped by earlier? Why? You moving? No. Why did they stop by? Drop off a filter for our furnace. Why would they do that? Well, they really, you know, they care about us. I mean, after the sale, they still care about us. Want to make sure that our air quality is healthy and they told us how to do it. Well, my realtor never did that. Well, maybe you should have worked with Mike. Maybe he'll give you a filter too. What are you doing differently? It's point of difference. What are you doing that no one else is? You know what those filters cost? Three bucks, four bucks. Don't go buy these HEPA filters. You know, if you talk to somebody who's in the HVAC business, you know what they call those? Blower busters. They choke down a heater. Don't take my word for it. Call your heater person. Just say, I need an orientation on heat, heater filters. Can you show me how to change them? Which way the arrow goes? You need to know that according to the way the input and output goes. It's not hard. And then take it from there. But know a little bit more about your product. And that's a great way to do it. And then do something that no one else is doing. What a great idea. Wasn't my idea. Someone shared that with me. I'm sharing that with you. So um, I'll bet you have listings, don't you? How many do you have? I don't know. Probably the average agent has six to eight. And I think that's low if you're really on top of your game, but let's say you only have six or eight. Well, there's eight notifications to everybody in your database. That's eight times a year, just listed a house. I wouldn't send it to somebody who just settled last week, but time out, yes, you do. Who do you send it to? Everyone because you just work with them, they know you did a great job, and the postcard or whatever way you do it comes in and they go, hey Bob, look, Mike's got a new listing. Oh, that's cool. Hey, didn't Jimmy at work want to get a new house? No, but Jimmy's brother's coming into town. Well, give it to him, and there it is. That's the handoff. They didn't say someone sent me the postcard, they said Mike's got a new listing. You are top of mind awareness when you're doing that, and I'm just gonna bet out of those eight houses. I'll bet you most of them sell. So guess what? Another notice needs to go out. Say six of them sell. That's 14 notices of listed and sold. You're not annoying them. And I'm going to give you a few, few more ways to do that. I bet you can think of some yourself right now too. But it's not hard to get to that 40 number. Someone says, well, I don't have time to do that. You know, I'm doing my business. That is your business. Customer relationship is your business. That's what we need to do. Now, when you call somebody, you can annoy them unless you have the big V working for you. I mean, you got to provide value, and value is intrinsic. I mean, what's valuable to me is not valuable to you, and vice versa. So you've got to find out what's valuable to them. I send out something in the process uh, called fun facts. I want to know, do they go to the movies? How often do they go to the movies? Do they go to restaurants? Which restaurants do they go to? How often do they do that? And there's other reasons, of course, that I want to know all these things. What are their hobbies? Uh, what do they do for fun? Once you know some of those things and make those notes, and you don't have to have a sophisticated database, you can put it right in the notes section on your Google Contacts. Go look up their name, say, likes to play golf. Great. Here's a sleeve of balls you send out to them. 
or you take them out to play or a golf magazine subscription or something that means something to them it may not mean nothing to you but you got to have value now here's what's value to everybody and it's called real estate um, real estate's important local knowledge is important so you might say something to them about local knowledge and say hey uh, did you see the front page today now I don't know if you guys saw the front page today but I've seen your front page today and I've seen it early this morning because I can look at front pages of over 800 newspapers around the world just by going to museum.org. So there you are, there's your Fayetteville Observer. Now, this website is free, there's no registration, and you can arrange it by site, by map, also it goes beyond the US, it goes out of the US, around the world, and you can read the front page, but only the front page, of any paper that's out there on their system, and there's hundreds of them. For example, just in North Carolina, um, I think I counted probably 15 or 20. I mean, Winston Sale. I mean, the whole state is covered in there. Check out museum.org. They had a physical building at 555 Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, but they closed it. Um, they just were running at a loss, but the uh, website is still up. So imagine calling someone you know in Alaska. Hey, we know Janelle and Les. Janelle, how's it going? How about that moose on Main Street you guys got? What's with that? Why? Because that's what was on the front page. Now, the other cool thing to use this for, if you have an inbound or outbound uh, customer, you can say, hey, where are you going? Santa Fe, great. I'm gonna send you a link to the front page of the Santa Fe Gazette. You can read the front page of that paper every day and sort of get the, the heartbeat of what's going on in the air. Would that be helpful to you? Man, is that value. That's why we're sharing some of these things with you. When you get time, check it out, museum.org. So we're gonna go live on something here in a minute. Um, I recognize that uh, there may be some people watching today without an iPhone, but we have to gamble and go with a, a larger group. So if you are and you want to do something else or go into a mental cul-de-sac, we're only going to be a few minutes, it's okay. But if you have an iPhone, you may want to stay tuned and see a couple of the little things that are not extremely well known that I discovered or some easily entertained and thought they were pretty cool. Uh, one is the ability to mirror your phone onto your computer for some reason. Now, if you're a presenter, I think it's a great reason because I'm going to show you some things on the iPhone right now rather than hold my phone up and point to them. I can just put it right up on my screen. Um, you may want to record that and you can. You can record things that you're doing on your screen using QuickTime. You know that. So let me show you how this works. So to mirror it, which is really to show you exactly what's on this phone, so I can show you a couple things on the iPhone. You have to tether it first, so you have to plug it into your USB port right into uh, your computer. You can't do it wirelessly without third-party software. Uh, after that, you open up your utility that comes with all your uh, Apple Macs uh, called QuickTime, and then you select New Recording, and then there's a drop-down, and you select iPhone. So uh, let's see if we can get to that point right now. Let's go over here. All right, so I'm going to turn on my phone. There's my inbox. Okay, so you are now looking right here, all of this on the left-hand side of your screen is my iPhone, so I can swipe across. Okay. This is where we get, ooh, and I'll usually when we're live. <laughs> I I got, pretty cool. Mike, I think So why am I showing you this? I'm showing this because I'm- Mike. Mike, you're show you're you're sharing yes. your computer screen, but we're yes. not seeing the um, the iPhone screen because I think you're still up in PowerPoint. Okay, let, let me let me try. Some. Okay, hang on a second. Let's do this. Thank you, Zan. Let's go here. How about now? Now we got your phone. Got it? Okay, cool. Thanks for telling me because it would have been a meaningless part of the presentation. <laughs> so um, if you want to know how to do this, just, you know, pull down and 
put in your search CLIPS, C-L-I-P-S. This, I've asked so many people with iPhones are using CLIPS, they go, what is that? Now, the only reason I know this, because I was teaching in, um, it was Portland, and um, I had some extra time. I try to go into the Apple stores when uh, I'm traveling a little bit. So they actually took us out and had to do a photo shoot, walk through the streets. It was really neat, and they used Clips as the program. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of Clips, not a step-by-step. -step. But I'm going to encourage you to look at it. So here's what I just did. I hit Clips, but in the upper left-hand corner, there is projects that I've done in the past. So it saves all your projects. And what you do in Clips is you bring in uh, little photos off your photo roll. You can bring in videos that you have that are on your camera and stitch them together. Now, if you've ever done this in iMovie, it takes a while. This is all done on your phone. And if you're going out for the afternoon, at by you know the end of the day, you wanna create a little something, you can do this all probably in about 10 minutes. So for example, um, yeah, Zan mentioned my grandson, he came over to watch birds. So uh, I just took some of the uh, clip art that's already in there and just created this little thing. And this is how that goes. Let's see, Let's see if we can get any sound here for you. Cause... Squirrels. This is one minute. get a chance you want to play with it. very effective and then from there you can send it off to anybody and it stays in the cloud you can pull it down anytime you want so uh, let's see why we're on the phone here let's see what else we got to share with you uh, let's jump back for a minute go over here to PowerPoint and Annotate photos, okay. So if you have a photo, and you've got millions of them probably, in your phone, you can annotate those photos. So for example, the other day I had to explain to somebody about some damage to a cabinet. So I'd taken pictures of, that's not the cabinet, that's our kitty cat. Uh, I had taken some pictures of the cabinets and there was damage done to one of the cabinets. Now, the way to do that is if you have that photo, you click on that photo, just press on that photo on an iPhone. If you have one, you can pull your iPhone up right now. Hit the edit button. Now, usually that's as far as we go and then we can adjust brightness and some other things. But in your upper right-hand corner, there's three little dots. Always press three little dots wherever you are. There's something that's gonna happen. Okay, that's just my new theory. Press the three little dots. Should get a t-shirt like that, I think. Anyway, you press the three little dots and hit markup. Once you hit markup, you see down below, you have the ability to draw different colors, different sizes. So I just took the yellow highlighter. You can make it a little bolder. And then with your finger, you can just do that. And you've got that, and then you can say done, and you can send that if you want, or you can take an eraser and erase it. So I think this comes in very handy when you're trying to show a part of a picture or feature part of a picture. So you wanna learn how to annotate it, and that's how you do that, okay? All right, let's go back here. Now, here's the steps. If you want to Google that, you can, how to annotate your photos with iOS markup feature. I just stumbled upon it and it's something that has helped me out and hopefully it's going to help you out too. Okay, so one of the things that I have found nationally, 
and Zan has too, we were talking about it yesterday, is the underutilization of the MLS. Dive into that, folks. There is magic there. Usually we go in, we just search and check our listings and you know, get some new listings for the buyers. But get into your industry watch, get into anything that's analytics. I mean, I did three clicks and I ended up with this fourth quarter report. And then I sent it off to a client. It gave me all this data. I, you know, I suddenly was an expert. I knew there was 3.1 months supply and I could speak to that. And you want to be able yep. to speak to that? Yes. Hi. Yes. Um, go back uh, to share just your PowerPoint so we can see it. Uh, you're not seeing it right now? Nope. We're still on the photo. Uh, all right. Let's go to stop share. Let's go back to share. Let's go back to desktop. Hang on. How about now? Got it. Medium sales price, okay, average now? sales price. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Got it. Industry watch. Okay. Yep. So um, I'll just back yep. up a couple in case you missed this. The pictographics that we're getting now are really cool. And it's literally three clicks to get some of this information together. I sent it off to one of my clients, said, not sure if you can use this, thought I'd pass it along. And I could con you know, actually let them know and comment on the low uh, supply in the MLS system for Kent County. I mean, he wrote back, this is great news. Now that's a short sentence and it's on about a $3 million land deal. They're contemplating whether there's value in buying the subdivision. That was a big thumbs up for them. And it didn't take me long to do that. Now, one of the other things in your MLS, free and most powerful underutilized in the MLS today is the auto search feature that you can use, not just for people who want to buy, but for clients that you've already dealt with. Now I have clients there with an asterisk for a reason. A lot of people say, you mean my past clients? Um, mindset, I want you to change a little bit. People you've sold houses to in the past are not your past clients. Think of them as your clients. The people you're working with now are your current clients. They're all clients if you believe you should be the realtor for life. Okay, so when you're talking to them, just say, you know, I wanted to know, because I'm contacting all my clients, I have this new special service and I'm gonna pay for this. Do you ever wonder when you see a sign in the neighborhood, you know, wonder what they're asking for that? I do too. So you're gonna get automatically into your inbox just what the realtors get with photos and descriptions. And by the way, if you got a friend or family member in another community, just give me their address, their email address. I'll make sure they get it for their neighborhood as well. Do you know anybody offhand that could use that? Maybe your brother or sister. And by the way, it's my treat. Now, you know, you might say, well, we get that for free, but we don't, we pay for that as part of our MLS. So let them feel special by doing that. And of course, you know, if they're searching, you know what they're looking at. And you're always, again, top of mind by doing something like that. If you want to step your game up, become a CCIM, or at least take some of their courses, I strongly recommend it. Uh, if you do, you get access to other databases like the site to do business is really powerful. It's also underutilized by the commercial industry. But the pictographics that come off of that are just amazing. Traffic counts, all types of things. Site to do business.com. So it's not about the technology, it's all about you. This does not have to be complicated. I met Don Miles in Shepherdsville, Kentucky area, and here's what he told me. Hi, I'm Don Miles. I'm from Shepherdsville, Kentucky. I work with Century 21 Advantage Plus. I started June 1st, 2010 in the real estate business after 27 years of being an over the road truck driver. I had no sphere of influence whatsoever. I uh, went to several different companies interviewing and the responses that I got from those agencies were not to expect to sell a house for the first year, maybe two years of business. When I went to Century 21, I talked to Lou Ann Moore, my principal broker. My question to her was, Lou, if you tell me I can't sell a house for the first year or two, I'm done. I'm out of here. And her response was, you can sell a house anytime you want. So I said, well, great. Tell me how. She said, what do you mean how? I said, tell me how to sell a house. I need to know. So she told me to contact 10 people a day. 
And she said, you do that, you'll be successful. Well, me and my ignorance, not realizing, went out to find 10 people a day who wanted to buy or sell a house. What I did, I wound up talking to 100 to 125 people per day, trying to find someone who wanted to buy or sell a house. I sold and closed my first house in seven days. I went back to her in September, end of September, 1st of October, and told her that I was going to resign from real estate. And her response was, why? And I said, well, I can't find 10 people a day who wants to buy or sell a house. And I'm talking to over 100 people a day trying to achieve this. And she said, Don, you don't have to sell. You don't have to find 10 people a day who wants to buy or sell a house. Just talk to 10 people a day. You'll be successful. I now have over 1,500 names in my database that I do regular follow-up with. Every time I get a new listing, I forward that new listing to all of those prospects. I'm constantly looking for ways to think outside the box and do things that other agents aren't doing. And I owe a lot of my success to that. My first year selling business, I sold 12 houses my first year. My first full year, that first year was for six months from June 1st uh, through the end of the year. My first full year, I sold 32 houses. Uh, last year, I sold 47 houses. So far this year, I've sold 26, closed 26, and I have eight pending. Um, I interviewed him in a CRS class. He told me his story. And I just said, you got to tell me the whole story again, but this time we're going to do it on camera. Just amazing. Uh, I know so many agents that had a thousand cards printed eight years ago and they still have half a box left. It's about getting it. I said, how do you talk to 100 people a day? He said, I just go into Walmart. Hi, I'm Don Miles. In case you're interested in buying or selling a house sometime, here's my card. That was this whole presentation. But you know, simple works. It really does work. We've got to change. We've got to do some things differently to grow. And part of that is what Charlie Tremendous Jones says, you're the same person today except for the people you meet and the books that you read. And that's so true. So we need to do more of that. Now, it's hard to read a lot. I mean, we're reading more now because we're at home, hopefully. But if we could just do 10 or 20 pages a day, I mean, just budget that. Again, you're setting an objective and a strategy when, once a day, 10 pages. Uh, you're going to be doing, what, 50 pages a week? That's 200 pages a month. You're doing a book a month, just like that. So chunk it on down. And the term is chunking. You want to chunk it on down. So there's the math. I mean, that's, that's pretty much. And don't, don't skim on it. I mean, do some deep reading. Somebody said, oh, I got to read that paragraph twice. That's OK, because you're internalizing it. A uh, great place to check for books. There's a lot of them, halfbooks.com, thrift books. Uh, but uh, don't be afraid of buying a used book. About 40 50% of all books, 40 to 60% of all books are never read. They're given as a gift. So I don't know about you, but if you bought a used book, I've never gotten a bad one. I mean, rarely are they even marked at all. They look brand new. A lot of people say after I read something 30 days later, I can't remember anything. And that's normal. That's very normal. What I started doing years ago was going to the back page and you see some scribble in there. That's the back page of this uh, book by Asheraf and Smith. Um, and I'll jot down like, you know, page 16, um, handling objections, or I make my own little uh, uh, summary in the back or a glossary, if you will. I can pick up that book 10 years later and look at it. And by the number of entries, know how much I liked it. And I know where page to go to to find that underlying part that I really want. And that's really helped me. Now I really do have a great, great library in the other room. I can pull books off that shelf and see what I like the best. Now my business partner says, Mike tells me about a book, I buy it, he reads it. And then I take the book from him and I just read his notes in the back and that's where I go to get the best of a book. So things. Now what I'm doing is I'm trying shouldn't use that word. I am rewriting into slides or something else. So uh, blue fishing, we had Steve Sims come in and, and uh, speak to one of our sessions. And there were so many cool things in his book. If you get a chance, you want to pick it up. It's called Blue Fishing, The Art of Making It Happen. It's really, it's not about fishing. It's about making the impossible possible for so many people. Um, a couple of things that uh, he came up with that I thought were pretty important I wanted to share with you. Um, is the power of conversation. Now, I realize the world we're in now, but that's going to change. So whenever you get the opportunity to visit those customers, 
that breathing, the way they're breathing, observing them, that wink or that eye, all those things, the nonverbals are just so important. So important, more so than the conversation of the phone. If you're closing a contract, you do want to sit across the uh, table from them and be nice. Simplicity, keep it simple, really works. Uh, I like this a lot. Don't be easy to understand, be impossible to be misunderstood. Someone asked for directions and then they said to the person again, all right, explain that to me again. This time, pretend I'm 12 years old. I thought, well, what a great way to communicate that. Responsibility and clarity is that of the author, not of the person listening. Do the basics. And, you know, we didn't even mention personal notes on contacts we were talking about earlier. But all this stuff really does matter. It really does matter. I mean, not doing a lot of those handshakes after a while. He also said no one drowned by being in the water. They drowned by not getting out of the water. And that was his father that taught him that. You've got to jump in. And when you hear enough no's, uh, one yes is nothing short of magical. We're good at handling the no's. Stay good at handling the no's. Send someone a book of stamps, put a picture of them. You know you can put a picture of a house, a new car, a baby. What a cool gift. Check it out at the post office. Um, there's some people that gave some bad advice. I won't read these all to you, but you can read them as we go along. Kind of amazing. Some people, first impressions are not necessarily correct. <clears throat> Glad she fished that out of the trash. Ford hung in there, didn't he? Just some people that just went with their first impression. I like this. And I was teaching somewhere, I think it was in Kansas, and they said, Oh, yeah, that was our bank. Our bank here did that. Well, I wouldn't probably. Tell a lot of people that. <laughs> Fail. In Thailand, there's no word that translates as no. They only have a word for yes and try. So there's no negativity there. Uh, asking why is really important. I like this. So the first time they say what they think they think. Second is what they think you want to hear. The third is what they feel. So that is the question you were born with. Babies do that, you know, why, why, why? You say, stop asking so many questions. No, that is the right thing to do. And that is exactly, exactly the right question. Now, this comes under the category of know thyself. Uh, Pat Zabie, who's an instructor, a great instructor and friend of Zan and I, uh, out of Dallas, he says, Mike, what kind of pen you're rating with? I said, well, just this pen. You know, you do sign contracts for $100,000 you should have, a good pen. You got to go out and get yourself one of them Montblanc, like this one. He took one out of his pocket. I thought, yeah, I need to do that. That pen's $349. I lost four of them. I lose things. I cannot keep things. So, you know, one thing is, and by the way, he has that the pen they showed me probably 12 years ago in his pocket every time I see him. But I did learn that the refills are $7 and they're, everything's water-based, so they dry up. And an inexpensive pen actually can write a lot better than a month block. So I don't get those anymore, but I've done some research. And I think this is actually one of the best pens out there. And in a room of 100 people, I get a lot of nods. So uh, you want to check it out at Staples. It's a Pentel Energel liquid. It doesn't smear like most gel pens. You can get in, uh, different types of needle tips. 0.5 is the one that I happen to use. Uh, you can give them away because they're inexpensive. And I just, for the fun of it, I put it into Google search and it came up under the best fine tip gel pens in the 2019 review. So once again, Pentel Energel Liquid Gel Ink Needle Tip. There they are, fast drying. Because lots of times we write on something glossy and, you know, it smears. So that's a good choice. Check it out. And the name of the game is Click Click Whirl. I mean, you just need to be able to do stuff quick and easy for now or for later. And here's a utility you're going to want to get. It's free, works in Chrome browsers and other browsers, and it's called Pocket. So it's for read it later. When you're looking at a website, it's one button install. It'll put that little pocket you see in the upper left-hand corner on your browser. You just click on that. It goes into the pocket. You can open the Pocket app later. You can read articles. It goes on your phone. It's across multiple platforms. If we had more time, I'd demo it for you, but fortunately we don't. But go to getpocket.com. Don't miss this one. It's a great one. Um, 
back to you know the ink pen and the file uh, the uh something as mundane as the file folders i just started creating some folders with names like this and i carry them in a little briefcase with me so i know when i'm going to my office i gotta have these things this one goes home this one gets to be filed this is some action i need to take today uh, again click click whirl you want to do something that has some structure to it maybe there's a reading folder for you uh, learn this and be able to repeat it to a customer or client. Because the rates the way they are right now, every thousand dollars you borrow at four and a half percent costs five dollars and seven cents for 30 years. Four and a half percent that is. Now our rates are even lower, right? They're three, three and a half. But I like four and a half because it's a nice round number. It's five dollars a thousand. So, you know, ten thousand dollars is fifty dollars a month. You can quickly relate that when you have other conversations. But you gotta, you gotta train yourself for that script. And that's progress. But change has to be the motivator. And as Robert Kennedy said, change has its enemies. There's no struggle, no progress. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. So pop quiz, of course, would be how much a month is 5,000 at 4.5? Well, if it's $5.07, hey, it's 25 bucks a month. You don't need the seven cents. You can, now you wanna be able to do this while you're having a conversation. Someone will say, you know, this house is $10,000 more. So say, you know what, $10,000 more at four and a half percent is only $50 more a month. You know, is this house worth, you know, less than $2 a day to you? And that's power. And that's how you close transactions. That's how I've closed a lot of transactions, knowing that script, okay. What's the price of happiness? Less than a dollar a day work for you? So, you know, we get down to, in new homes, if you'd like that double oven, it's gonna cost an extra $20 a month. If you want that fireplace, is it worth a dollar a day to you to have that fireplace? We just take it right on down to the day. Um, with, in these times, you can use a chart like this. Um, that's Jackson. <laughs> uh, look at the difference. A $200,000 mortgage for 30 years would have cost you in the 80s $2,641. If you finance that house today, it would cost you $898. Any questions? This by far is the shortest, most effective chart you could show a buyer today on why they really need to consider buying. Okay. Okay, do we have more? Yeah, we've got more. Um, Love to do a whole lot more for you if I could, but what I want to do right now is just jump back, just stand by if you would for a second. I want to take you back to about, right about here, because we're right on the time number here. Uh, this will be really, we do have this little test for you to wrap things up. In the next slide, I want you to decide who's the introvert and who's the extrovert. Okay, we'll see what your powers of observation are and how you can really uh, identify your customers. So get ready. And then after that, if there's any questions, then I'll be glad to take any of those. So introvert, ex well, it's not them. It's really. The you know what can be Mike, we're not seeing the screen. You're not? Oh. Okay, stand by. Thank you. Got to share that screen with us. There we go. Let's see. All right. Not that one. Uh, let's see. Stop share. Share here. All right. Do you see a good looking couple here? Yep. Okay, we're back. All right. So we're looking for the introvert or the extrovert, right? You got that slide? Okay. Got it. All right. Not them. Here. You know what can be them. Even not Oh, 
some Q and A, see if we've got any questions from our audience. I was just going to ask you that. So uh, we've got, uh, we've got about 50 people online. Anybody got any questions for Mike? We uh, uh, been through a world of information. I've got three or four pages of notes and I have my blue pen. Um, these are the best writing pens. <laughs> oh, you got one. That's cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. I got the whole office converted to these. <laughs> I think you might've turned me on to them. Somebody did. Excellent. That's the one. Any questions uh, for Mike? Anything that you want to, uh, to ask about that you saw while we were online? Hey, Kevin, I really enjoy your smiles through the presentation. You got a good one. They're going to have to turn their mics back on or we can turn them on if they have a question. Oh, I, f I forgot to tell them uh, what we need to do is drop you into the group chat down at the bottom of your screen, hit the chat button and uh, send us a, a chat question. Uh, if I turn everybody's mic on, it'll be with 50 people that get a little bit um, confusing. Uh, it says clips, please refresh. I don't understand that. So for okay. the whole question, and ask us again. Clips, please refresh. I don't understand. Okay, Clips, Clips was the application that comes with your Apple iPhone. It's stock. Okay, so that's the one we showed you earlier. It should be on the current operating system. Just when, when you put your, slide your finger down, put the word Clips in, it should pop right up. And that's the app that we created those little videos in. If you're not sure, get online and Google uh, Clips application, iPhone, and you'll see it. All right. So, um, but it's inside my iPhone. It ships with it. It's on there. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Other questions? Drop them right in the chat box. Let's see if we've got any other questions. Can you see that screen? Uh, you see the clips right at the top of that? Yeah, I saw it when you put it up on the um, screen, but I can't seem to find it on my phone. If you just put C-L-I-P-S. Uh, is your version like a 10 or later? If it's not, you may not have it. I have no clue, man. Okay. It's a phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 10, yes. I think uh, you're right. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Yes, Michael said that it's in the App Store. If you don't right. know, you get it there. So we can go to the App Store and look up clips and add it as an app on the way. All right. <laughs> it's a great little utility. All right. Other questions? Um, is there a clip version for Android phone? I don't know. It's, a, it's an Apple product. You might just have to go online and ask that question. I'm sure there's some little video creators. I like it because it grabs things right out of your photo collection, the videos, and it's very intuitive to use. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for the nice comment. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, this has been good stuff. And I want to come back to something that you said about MLS statistics and the auto search. One of the most powerful things that our MLS does, and every MLS does it, is you can set up a client to notify them of activity around them. And um, uh, like if we have a rental property, you can set it up so it notifies me when other rental properties similar to mine come on the market, shows me what's going on, shows me the value of my properties, uh, houses as well. Now here's what the agents really need to understand. Zillow does this too. Well, if your clients, and, they're, and I love that, they're never your past clients. If your clients are going to Zillow and accessing this same service, wouldn't you prefer they have you provide this service through your MLS, which is more accurate? Um, so, you know, the consumer can get this information with you or without you to increase your value. It needs to be with you. Absolutely. Um, so good book for marketing tools for new listings, description words that grab the buyer's attention. Uh, Mike, have you got a suggestion for a good book on marketing tools for new listings, description words that grab the buyer's attention? Or an app. You know, what a, I I like uh, I like uh, less blah blah more aha by uh, Ken Brand B R A N D. He's a practitioner. He runs a real powerhouse out of Texas. He came in and uh, free and spoke to all the CRS instructors. But there was more great stuff in there. Uh, the other is uh, Keller's Power of One. I mean, that is that is a super book it as well. Um, I would read both of those because they're books in the business, doing business, and just might be able to help you a little bit. Is it Yvonne, I think? Um, yeah. Give us those things. two book names again. Less Blah Blah, More Aha, Ken Brand. And the other is The Power of One. And Keller... And I forget the co-author. Uh, you guys are probably Googling that right now. You'll find it. Uh, it's a great read. It really is. And, you know, Jeffrey, uh, who did The Slate Edge? Um, uh, that's the third book. If I did, you know, recommend three to you, I'd probably give you that one too. Slate Edge. Uh, I'll tell you here in just a second. Is... Go on, internet. Jeff Olson. Jeff Olson. Uh, probably my top three. And it's about incre incremental change, taking a few strokes off your game. Zan, you know, in golf, you only need one stroke better than the other guy, right? So <laughs> read Olson, uh, read Ken Brand and Power One. There's three books for you. Don't miss those. Uh, Olson's uh, title was The Slight Edge. The Slight Edge. Cool. Okay. You're welcome. You are welcome. Other questions? We've got about three minutes left. If you got a question, now is the time for it. You got a bunch of people in here today, Zan. Oh, yeah. We had about uh, 50 as we went through. So, uh, That's good. Hey, I got to tell you, you know, at a national level, we're doing CRS classes now virtually. You guys have uh, done better than several of our classes having 50 people on. I oh, mean, yeah. this is a real... Thumbs up to you guys. You're, you're in a great part of the country. You're in a great board and stay with it. Like um, Ray Kroc from McDonald's fame, older guy at the time. And he, they said, so being that old and all, you're still going to classes and seminars. He says, you got two choices. You can be green and growing or ripe and rotten. What do you want to be? That's exactly right. Um, so and somebody you says, can you kids. watch this video in full again if you join late today? Absolutely. We've been uh, recording the entire time. Uh, as soon as we finish, we will download it and then upload it. With your permission, Mike, we'll put it on our uh, association website no and um, uh, allow anybody to rewatch it because a lot of information. <laughs> Look, at Look at the comment. Look at the comment. 
<laughs> Donna wants to know where can you find the bird video? I am sure it's on YouTube. I've, yeah, Elvis uh, bird singing, you'll find it. But look at the next next comment. Yeah, if you quit moving, they're gonna bury you. I love that. I love it. That's a great one. <laughs> so I always like to say, are you learning as fast as the world is changing? You have to. Because to me, if you're not learning something every daggone day. So while we're doing that, here let me do a, a shameless commercial. Okay. Um, I teach a two-day course called Recharge. And we're going to bring that recharge online in June, every Thursday for four Thursdays. It'll go from nine to noon, uh, four weeks in a row. It's called recharge and everybody listening will get a um, email for that. It'll go nationwide and we'll see how many folks we can get in it. Uh, in the, uh, but it'll be every Thursday from nine to noon in June right here on be this great. channel. It's going to be great guys. You don't want to miss that. I might even talk you into coming in and doing a little pieces with me on marketing hey, and technology. We can, we can do that. That'll be fun. Mike, it's been my honor and pleasure to have you with us today. Again, Mike Savaggio, Nationwide Instructor, CRS, uh, Ninja Master Instructor. Um, he is probably the funniest guy ever. And you talked about us getting laughed up. Mike has my funny bone. <laughs> and he loves to get me giggled up. And usually in a very intense meeting, like a board of directors meeting or in a small room where people have, I've been thrown out of meetings because of that guy right there uh, getting me so giggled up. I just had to leave the room. So, uh, so tell him about the neck brace. Oh, no, no, no. no go ahead. It's, it's so we're in a meeting in Washington, D.C. Board of directors. This is a. Yeah, it was, a, it was a very small room and a board of directors, very important. And we were close to the, to the important people. And a lady walked in wearing a neck brace. And Mike simply leaned over to me and asked in my ear, do you think she gets FM radio with that? And somehow it just got me so tickled. And then he wouldn't quit. And he kept coming. And finally, I had to leave the room. So... Uh, if you ever get one on one with Mike Savaggio, he's about the funniest guy. Ever. Gotta have fun. Gotta have fun. Gotta have fun. Any last questions before we go? If not, Mike, it's been my honor and pleasure to see you again today. Same I'll here. give you a holler later on today. Thanks for being here. And yes, this has been recorded and we'll post it up for our members to watch. See you guys. See you, buddy. Thank you.